What's happening everybody? Trey here, joined as always by my dad Sean. And today, reactions to the classics. We had another review up of Mr. Tom Waits. This time, his fourth record, Small Change. We're going through Waits' entire discography. Uh, for right. our patron and long, uh, long time supporter and big Tom Waits fan, Josh. So, Thank you, Josh. Always, Josh, appreciate you and uh, what you bring us to the channel, man. And uh, we've really enjoyed our weights journey up to this point. Yeah, we definitely have. And if you uh, like this video, please give it the big thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button below if you haven't already. We've got stuff uploaded every single day. Check out our Patreon link below. Maybe you want us to react to an album, a song, a top 10 list, all that good fun stuff. The patrons make this channel go. And check out our live stream link on Twitch every Friday night, every Wednesday afternoon, and whenever else we feel like jumping on. That's right, man. So uh, all that to say, let's uh, get into these quick facts. We well, already mentioned the fourth studio album released in 1976, recorded direct to a uh, two-track stereo tape by the producer Bones Howe in Hollywood in 1976. It was a surprise Billboard chart hit, quote, hit for Tom as it went to number 89 three weeks in, then it fell off, uh, and it was his highest charting album until 1999's Mule Variations. The album featured famed drummer Shelly Maine and was like Waits' previous albums, heavily jazz influenced with a lyrical style that owed influence to Raymond Chandler and Charles Bukowski, as well as a vocal delivery influenced by Louis Armstrong, Dr. John, and Howlin' Wolf. We'll get into that in a little bit. The music, for the most part, consists of Waits' gravelly rough voice set against a backdrop of piano, upright bass, drums, and saxophone. Some tracks have a string section. Now, at the time of this album, Tom was drinking more heavily. He basically mm -hmm. just said, you know, it's the touring life. You're traveling, you show up in different towns. It's a tough life. You start drinking, and, and you're going to see as we go through this album, most of the songs are influenced by yep. that alcohol <laughs> use and the characters you come across, you know, strippers, drunks, all kinds of various uh, hobos, all various kinds <laughs> of people. So, uh that, that's kind of what you're going to come across mm -hmm. on this album. Well, and even the cover is a bit striking. You it got, is uh, very striking. The go-go dancer in there, Tom, kind of looking away, just a, a bit seedy, which I think reflects the themes of now, the record. Now, Urban Legend has it that for people my age, you know who this is, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. Uh -huh. That's who Urban Legend says that is, but it's never been confirmed. <laughs> and uh, Tom said at this time he had, you know, that lounge bar kind of, uh, bottom of your beer type yeah. of image. He kind of thought that there was something amusing about being a drunk, but the more he got into it, the more he's like, I need to cut this out. And uh, some of that's kind of detailed out here. He's very honest on this record, which uh, will transition us now to the track by track. We started off with an absolute banger. Uh, yeah, we do. And uh, as always, all tracks are written by Tom. We're going to kick it off with Tom Trabert's Blues, uh, in parentheses, four sheets to the wind in Copenhagen. <laughs> Over six and a half minutes long, uh, it has some of the waltzing Matilda mm -hmm. famous song in hey, there. Which we're familiar with. We're very familiar with. And it kind of narrates his alcohol abuse both in Copenhagen and in Los Angeles. So uh, an interesting one to start out with. And as you said, a banger. Yeah, well, uh, that waltzing Matilda from the Pogues. From you the know. Pogues. And we recently did a top 10 list of them that you can find on the channel. And which is uh, unique because I had never heard of the track. And then here in the span of a couple of weeks... Uh, pops up yeah uh, and so yeah man this one is fantastic it has that lush string arrangement at the start and uh that uh, of course contrasts well because even even in this um and i mean further on in the record tom really goes into that gravelly type yeah of voice. The, the second he came on in this album I'm like <laughs> okay we've already done the first three albums i'm like okay this is where it started this is where he really started to embrace that different delivery oh definitely and maybe maybe some of that alcohol catching up to it him. could be too the alcohol and the cigarettes yeah very much so but uh, yeah this was one of my favorites on the entire record uh, didn't feel long no I, I thought it was uh, it kind of put in some of the best of weights you had the beautiful instrumentation you have uh, those lyrics that are both desperate and authentic at the same time you have that signature voice and uh, you know stories and characters that uh, you can just kind of connect with and uh, uh, you know, visualizing your head, yeah. all of this playing out. So uh, I thought it was a great way uh, to open this up. I did too, and I forgot to mention Rod Stewart actually did a cover of this and released ah. it as a single in the early 90s. Now, Tom said this about the track. He stated the title character was a friend of a friend who had died in prison. He said the reference to the time that Waits spent in Copenhagen, Denmark, in the parentheses, four sheets to the wind in Copenhagen. He said that he met this girl named Matilda, and uh, I had a little too much to drink that night. This is about throwing up in a foreign country. And Bones Howe, the producer, had a different take on this. Mm -hmm. He said that Tom told him that he 
bought a pint of rye in a brown paper bag and went out and hung out with the homeless people and that helped inspire him on this song. Uh, Bones went and actually checked this out, talked to several of the people. And, yeah, Tom just went down there and hung out, which what we know <laughs> with Tom doesn't surprise me a lot. Bones also spoke incredibly highly of the lyricism on this. He considers the lyrics to be, quote, brilliant and the work of an extremely talented lyricist. Speaking to the lyrics, how it said, occasionally I'll do something for songwriters. They all say the same thing to me. All the great lyrics are done. And I say, I'm going to give you a lyric that you never heard before. A battered old suitcase to a hotel someplace and a wound that will never heal. Obviously, that's from this song. Mm-hmm. But what a way to start. Um, it's pretty hard oh, to yeah. top this in the, in the start. Now we're going to go to a, a totally different track. Uh, yeah, talk about a contrast. Step right up. It has that upright bass. Well, and it, true to its name, yeah. Yeah, and he's just basically just firing off stuff oh yeah it's a spoken word tons basically. of yeah that lyrical beat poetry yeah. you know really uh, uh an inspiration on this too like an auctioneer yeah that that's uh yeah that's a great because it really was he was just just firing left and right it's a uh, one that i'm not really going to revisit but no. I, I appreciated it for no, what it's it was, part of the experience man, man. it's all upright bass and a little bit of horns at the yeah. end and he was just showing you like whoa okay it gets your attention coming oh, from yeah. from the previous track that's for sure a, a unique delivery and i like a one of there's a lot of humorous lines oh in there. man one of them that stood out was you know the large print uh, giveth and the small print taketh take it. away you know always got to watch that small print uh, you, you, know, you do man that's going to take us to jitterbug boy in parentheses sharing a curbstone with Chucky e. Weiss, Robert Marchese, Paul Bodie, and the Mug and Artie. It's got a great line in there because I slept with the Lions and Marilyn Monroe, had a breakfast in the eye of a hurricane, fought Rocky Marciano, played Minnesota Fats, burned $100 bills. Basically, I think the guy in the song, which is Tom, I guess in this case, he's leaning up against the lamp post mm-hmm. and he's telling these increasingly <laughs> improbable tall tales. I think maybe just hoping that someone mm-hmm. will listen to him. I think with the overall theme yeah. of the record kind of it's the drunk whose life didn't turn out like he wanted it, so he's going to tell the stories of the to, way it should have been. To try to, yeah, track people. I yeah. know some people like that. He says he taught Mickey Mantle everything he knows yeah. and this and that. Um, and do I, you know who Minnesota Fats is? You probably don't. I don't, no. Yeah, he was a great uh, pool player. <laughs> billiards. Oh, okay. Whenever I was a little kid, so I figured you didn't. But yeah, he drops like the best of the best in the there betting. along with Mickey. That just reminded me of that. No, yeah, and uh, I, I appreciated that, man. It was, uh, again, uh, it's kind of humorous at points. kind of has that drunken type of vocal. Yeah. Yeah, delivery definitely. style. You even have a almost some like scat singing and vocalization yeah. to end us off, a piano driven. And uh, you know, Jitterbug, it's uh, a person who's kind of nervous, but it's also like a 40s kind of swing yeah. dance type of thing. Well, dual so, meaning. You know, I, you always learn something going through uh, Waits' uh, tunes. You always learn a lot. That's going to take us to the fourth track. I wish I was in New Orleans, in parentheses, in the Ninth Ward. It's a ballad tray. He pays tribute, obviously, to New Orleans. The repeated mantra of a Bottle of My Friends and Me is one of the record's most warm, memorable moments, according to most of the critics. Mainly just Tom and the piano, some strings eventually, Mm -hmm. but a much lower key. I mean, we're going all over the place on this thing, which I think is a good thing. Oh, definitely. And I mean, we've uh, we've been to New Orleans. We have been to New Orleans. And, uh, you know, this is kind of a... I, you know, I think of a song about New Orleans, I think really energetic going in. This, I do too. This wasn't necessarily like that, but uh, I, I think Tom made uh, the best of it. And hey, Chucky e. Weiss uh, gets a, another name drop shout out in this. He, he does, man. In this tune as well. Uh, and then that already takes us to uh, the uh, fifth track. Yeah, the final song on the uh, A side track. The piano has been drinking. In parentheses, not me, an evening with Pete King. And here we got some of the most humorous lines, oh, yeah. I think, on the record. We have the piano tuner's got a hearing aid and he showed up with yep. his mother. And the owner is a mental midget with the IQ of a fence post. The carpet needs a haircut. And the white man's blind in one eye and he can't see out of the other. So he's basically just <laughs> spouting off all these things. Every once in a while, the piano's out of key and he's kind of stumbling over, singing over. Yeah. All for dramatic effect. Uh, rough voice for sure. Definitely. Lower key instrumentation again, you know. I mean, mm-hmm. obviously the piano's in there, but I thought it was a, a very amusing song. Oh, me too, man. I, I like it. You got some of the serious parts of the drunkenness yeah. kind yeah. of in this record, but then you got stuff like here, you know, where, oh, and I just like how he personified all these objects that, you know, weren't alive, but saying this or that. Um, 
That was kind of neat as well. Yeah, a little throwback for me to Nighthawks at the mm-hmm. diner, just of him like waxing That's on true. stuff. So now we're going to start side two already with Invitation to the Blues. Yeah, and I again thought this was beautifully arranged. Had that lounge jazz Yeah, basically feel. piano and tom, and, eventually a little sax. Yeah, and uh, pretty much here he's, uh, I think, cut into the heart of where, you know, you kind of have this love interest where, um, yeah. you know, you haven't really professed those feelings yet. In this case, it's a... It's a woman, um, you know, working at a restaurant, and uh, so he goes there every night. He says, what the hell have I got to lose? And Sells his bus ticket, says, yeah. I'm just going to be here, man. And he thinks, oh, I bet she had, like, a sugar daddy, this yep. or that. You start to run in your mind, oh, man, she's probably already taken. She's already this or that. But, uh, hey, you still have that infatuation. So uh, this was one of my favorites, actually, on the record. I thought one of the ironies of this invitation to the blues is that it doesn't sound blues sounding <laughs> That's at all. That's true. Not that it was supposed to, but now we're going to come to one of those songs that, I mean, Song titles are everything, That's right. right? Pasties <laughs> and a G-string in parentheses at the 2 o'clock club. I think he's going to strip club, but appears to be homeless. He's spitting those lyrics out, Trey, with only drums. So definitely stylistically different again, oh. just like the second song yeah. on the first side. Well, that's what I wrote down. The percussion in here was definitely a highlight. And uh, yeah, I mean, th- this track, again, is a bit amusing, yeah. a bit wild. You know, kind of fits, again, that front album cover uh, as well with what we got going yeah, on. Yeah, it does. Um, you know, not a favorite for me or anything but uh, i liked it uh, for what it was now we're going to come to one that uh, has one of my favorite weights lines ever bad liver and a broken heart in parentheses and whoa i think she left him probably because he cheated he loves to drink now back to just tom and the piano but the line i love is and i don't have a drinking problem except when i can't get a drink so Ooh, i thought <laughs> i love that line too man i was like wait a minute i gotta hear this again so yeah Ooh. just one of tom's uh funny tongue-in-cheek things well and i noticed that too there were parts that are funny but it's also kind of sad no it's very sad this guy's just drowning all his problems in alcohol which at the end of the day you know that's not uh it's not going to fix the issue and he knows it (laughs) yeah while he's doing it and i think a lot of us have been through that in different aspects or to degrees in our life and uh you know so I, i thought it was powerful in its message right there even though it had you know that touch of humor to it it still had kind of that serious message where if you read between the lines you can see what uh Tom's going for. Yeah, now we're going to talk about the one that got away. Mm. Starts with bass, then horns. He's more talking to you, so it's a little less gravelly. There's all kinds of stories on this one mm-hmm. about the one that got away. From a John to a cop. This mm-hmm. is It's kind of just going, you know, and I think that's the way life is for yeah. a lot of people. They look at the one that got away, whether it was a person, a job, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, something that you wish you could have back, yeah. essentially. And uh, yeah, just a bunch of wacky kind of tales yeah. throughout here. Again, a bit of a fun tune. Not going to be in my favorite track or anything but uh, I like at the end how he goes in to a, a tattoo parlor and uh, gets gets her name tattooed on him and uh, yeah I, I just hope it was spelled right you know <laughs> well that's gonna take us to small change in parentheses got rained on with his own mm. 38 small change is the name of the guy who got shot probably with his own gun probably a teen as they take out of this everyone took his stuff off him after he was shot each verse started with him getting shot there's some horns as the backing tom's more talking again but then mm-hmm. like when he gets into a verse he'll just kind of start singing all of a sudden yeah. and then he goes back to talking so that was an interesting technique he does it on a couple songs in this you just don't see that very often. well and i quite enjoyed the saxophone solo that we had yeah at the i figured start. you would um you know it really was just the saxophone and Tom's vocals, which added to the seriousness of the track. I agree. And uh, this, again, was a, a very strong, strong tune here. And I, I enjoyed the fact that at the start, he would, you know, kind of repeat you know, about our, our protagonist in the yeah. story. Continue to add details here and there until you get to the kicker. You know, he got rained down by his own 38. So uh, I thought it was a powerful song. Yeah, he had the gambling ticket in his pocket. Mm-hmm. He had all these things. So People yeah, I think, stealing from yeah, him. Yeah, and know? I think the further he delves into playing it out the more you can identify with small mm-hmm. change you go man that could be anybody and that's going to take us to our last track i can't wait to get off work in parentheses he was parentheses on this one and see my baby on montgomery avenue it has a simple musical arrangement with only tom's voice and piano the lyrics are about his first job at napoloni pizza house in san diego which began in 1965 at the age of 16 uh, goes through all these jobs goes home and i like the line i got money to spend on my girl but the work never stops because dad once you get that money 
you got to keep going for it, especially when your girl's involved. You know? Yeah, exactly, because you got to get a nicer car, a bigger apartment or a bigger house. It just never ends. But, uh, you know, he talked about this in a song on his first album, Closing Time, that we got up on the channel about That's that right. job in Napoloni's Pizza. So we're getting to know Tom. He's revisiting no, stuff. But we are. I thought a great way to end is piano, vocals, telling well, me a great story. Well, so. and thematically, too, it, it was a bit more positive, uh, a little less alcoholism. You yeah. Know, it's kind of a, a bit of a heavy record, even if it's kind of packaged it in a humorous way so i thought this was a way to kind of you know bring us on on a more you know quote happy note which takes us to our favorite tracks i got invitation to the blues tom Trabert's blues and the piano has been drinking i got the piano has been drinking and tom Trabert's blues uh picking a fave was hard for me i think there's some songs on here that aren't supposed to be faves mm -hmm. you know the spoken word and yeah exactly that kind of stuff but i'll tell you what i listened to this album several times a couple weeks ago and then, you know, I knew we were shooting this video today. So I went back and listened to it again this morning just to have a little yeah. refresher in the mind. There's been a lot of music between now and then. And I'll tell you what, it holds up. I liked it yeah. even better when I went back and listened to it after my several initial listenings. So for me on overall grade, I'm going to be at a 775. And it's one of those things I always say, if you don't like Tom, this is probably the album you're going to get to. I mean, Nighthawks at the Diner we talked about, yeah. you know, on the, where it's, it's just a different kind of album. It's not really meant to be, you know, listened to mm -hmm. as a musical experience. But this is the first one where if you don't like Tom's voice that you know, like all the later records, this is the one where you're probably not going to like it because he starts yeah. to really embrace that. But that turn start. That turn sure. is definitely starting. But man, I, I really enjoy Mr. Waits. Just a oh, yeah. brilliant lyricist. No, definitely. That's uh, been a great discovery just since he's not the most popular no. you know, guy. It's not like you're hearing his songs on the radio, uh, and if you do, uh, more likely a cover version. Well, and like I talked about, went to number 89. This album's yeah. the highest rated album he had or highest charting until 1999, which is almost mind-boggling that this guy you know, recorded real. for nearly 30 years without an album that went past number eight, 89. That's just a testament well, to it. Yeah, that stuck out to me too. And I think this kind of showcases some of the best weights. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm also at, in that 775 range as well. I thought it was a really, really strong yeah, record uh, from start to finish. You know, didn't overstay its welcome. It, it clocks in around 50 minutes, but uh, I didn't think it seemed like No, that. it didn't seem like it. Uh, I, I think because you had that variety of instrumentation yep. and even subject matter going from humor to seriousness to wackiness to that vague bond type of culture uh that that uh, more nighttime darkish yeah. atmosphere kind of permeates a lot of tom's work but this were uh, but this record in particular as well so a uh, big thumbs up to small change here and i'm uh, looking forward to continue to, to go Me on too. and see see what creative of force tom is uh, going to be in the uh, coming records and uh, all that to say let us know what you think of small change down in the comment section below shout out again to josh thank you josh for taking us on this journey thank you as always dad for it's always research. fun with tom man yeah. always fun never know what you're gonna get you don't and uh, until next time y'all thanks for watching happy listening and we will see you